welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we are in a totally different situation today, a totally different vibe. We've got some really big palm trees here on my left. There's some dripping Spanish moss here over on the right. There's a lot of blue clouds, a lot of green grass. It was just such a vibe and something that I wanted to bring to all of us here, just share it with you as we're talking about this upcoming Libra full moon or the Libra full moon if you're watching it at the time that it is occurring. So because I'm working remotely and chilling outside with you guys today, I did print the astrology chart for the Libra full moon that I'll be referencing and I have my Cleopatra tarot that I will be shuffling and pulling from in order to get additional messages to help support us um, and the energy of this Libra full moon. For those of you guys that have already downloaded the ebook that I created at the very beginning of this year, this is an awesome time for you to scroll to that section within the book, that chapter, that breaks down the energy of that full moon even more as far as what is it you can expect and it allows you to kind of follow along. If not, I will definitely link down in the description box um, the link so that you can download it if you haven't already, okay? So first things first, you guys, the one thing that is really standing out to me is not the fact that the moon is sitting in the sign of Libra, but it's the fact that the sun and Chiron and Venus are sitting in the sign of Aries, directly, directly, specifically directly opposing the energy of the full moon or the moon that's sitting um, in the sign of Libra. Now, I mentioned this in my book, but this is going to really highlight our independence it really highlights the self and this is when spirit divine timing the planets the cosmos they have a sit down with us they want you know they're, they're asking us to kind of sit down at the table pull up a chair and let's have a real serious self-reflective moment and the reason why they want us to self-assess is because most of us are about to enter into a, a stage and a cycle in your life where you are going to be asked to harmonize and align deeper with something. Now that something depends on your chart. It, it could be a different or a higher vibration of a lifestyle. So you might be needing to harmonize with your diet or an exercise routine. For some of you guys, it could be your seventh house of relationships, your partnerships. Um, so you might be harmonizing with, you know, the love of your life or the a potential, um, you know, husband or wife type of material. It could be harmonizing with aspects of yourself that still need healing, the, the shadow self or the subconscious. Every single one of you guys is different and the way to find out where this is occurring is by checking out your rising sign. Um, you know, that the looking and pulling the chart, your astrology chart, your natal chart is going to help you to get a, a gist of where the planets are falling, you know, in the chart for you. So go ahead and definitely let me know down in the comments where this full moon is occurring, what house it's occurring for you, and I will answer as many as I can if you guys have that question or I'll give you some support and some love when it comes to that, all right? So, but back to the chart. When I'm looking at the fact that Venus is sitting in the sign of Aries, Chiron is sitting in the sign of Aries, the Sun is sitting in the sign of Aries, all of them are at eight degrees directly opposing this full moon, the full moon happening in the sign of Libra. This is about looking at exactly what it is that you have been attracted to in the past, the present, and what you are going to want to um, you know, shift into as far as like what you're gonna be attracted to in the future. What does this mean? Well, this means, okay, what is important to you? What is valuable to you, right? So there are certain things today now present that you know you want to prioritize, that you know that you wanna invest in, that you wanna build upon, or that you are drawn to. It's like a, a, a vibrational match. You're just kind of drawn to it. It's attractive to you, right? Um, but then also moving forward into the future, you wanna plan according to you know, the life that it is that you're envisioning for yourself, okay? So this is when you are given the permission from the planets, from the placements of the stars to ask yourself, okay, where do I see myself in three months? Where do I see myself in 10 years? What does that look like? What, how can I, when I visualize that, what are the details and the specifics of that? And spirit, regardless of where, who and what you have already harmonized with or that you've already aligned with, 
Spirit is saying, listen, we want you to prioritize your vision because how you see things, the self, Aries rules the I am, the self, um, is everything. And when you have that greater vision and you can see what you're attracted to and what you're called to, then it will help you to change and adjust certain things within yourself that aren't a match towards that higher vision. And also it will help you to break away from the, the things, the people, the places that have been kind of lying dormant within you um, that have not, I don't wanna say been holding you back, but just don't match ultimately where it is that you you know, the, the, the universe sees you going. The other thing that I'm seeing as I'm looking at the chart is the fact that Mercury ruling our minds, our thoughts, our thinking is sitting in the sign of Pisces. Neptune is sitting in the sign of Pisces. And the um, Mercury and Mars are squaring off with each other. The North Node is sitting here squaring squaring with uh, Mercury as well and, and Neptune. Basically what this is telling me is that your thoughts, if when you take this time out for yourself, to focus on the self, to focus on, again, what you're attracted to, what you're envisioning, your soul's um, earning, you know, yearning, what you're yearning for, you will start to get downloaded downloads and instant visions and be able to visualize, again, this life that, is that you see for yourself. Now, again, everyone is so different. Some of us are going to be breaking away from old habits and old lifestyles and diets that just honestly just don't serve you. It makes you feel dense, it makes you feel weak, or maybe it makes you feel like you're buzzing, right? Um, so there are certain areas of your life that really are gonna get called to you know, assess, okay, where, how, why am I har harmonizing with? Why am I aligning with this? And with Chiron sitting in Aries, it really starts to answer that question, okay, the reason why I was attracted to this lifestyle, the reason why I was attracted to this person, the reason why I was attracted to this work or this career was because it's it, there was a spot within me that needed healing. There was a spot within me that needed to learn those lessons. And that's why, again, this full moon wants to re reshift your focus and reprioritize this self, this new self, this new identity, this new life, this new energy that is you know unfolding in your life. Not too long ago, we had the spring equinox, and this is when Aries energy, or the sun, moves into Aries energy. And this is technically the start of the new zodiac cycle. It's, it's a brand new year, a fresh start, a new beginning. So if that's truly the case, this is the first opportunity for us to, again, look at ourselves, look at our life, see what we're attracted to, the physical things too, you guys. Even as spiritual beings, sometimes we feel embarrassed because we're like, you know, I'm a spiritual person and I, I'm trying to attract and maintain this higher vibrational lifestyle. Should I feel ashamed or should I feel bad because I have these things? But the reality is, is that things, our values, money, all of those things are found within the chart and they do serve a role. They do have an important role within our lives. So what will help you, you know, to have a life where everything in your environment from the phone that you're using, if you choose to use a phone, the bags that you're using, the cards that you're shuffling with, this, the flip flops or the sneakers or the high heels that it is that you decide to walk in every single day, how you dress yourself, how you adorn yourself, does it match who you are right now? And if not, this is again a time in the universe and the divine timing to ask yourself, okay, I may have aligned with this or this may have been okay or this may have served its purpose, but as a human being and as a spiritually evolving soul, I'm constantly shifting, I'm constantly evolving. And at this point, um, you know, at the time of the full moon, I'm given permission to kind of reassess and reprioritize and refocus, you know, my vision and be inspired so I can see things and feel things from a totally different vibration. And you'd be surprised how one small shift, one small change can change everything. Just for a small example, Remember how I was saying flip-flops versus heels, right? So this is for my girls out there. And my guys, so I don't know if you guys have ever had this night where you go out with your friends and you're wearing heels, you're all dressed up, you're, you know, you're feeling good, and you're walking around in your heels, you're dancing around in your heels, and it's just starting to, your feet start to hurt, you know what I mean? And you're just like, damn, like, it's really starting to put you in a bad mood, right? Um, but then if you have flip-flops, let's say you switch over from the heels to the flip-flops, then all of a sudden that small shift, no matter how insignificant, <coughs> God bless me, 
<laughs> no matter how insignificant it may seem, just switching from your shoe source can totally carry the night on for some really awesome memories, help you to relax, make you stay out a little longer, you know, all of those things just by doing that minor shift. And that's essentially what is I'm seeing at the Libra full moon. As, as silly as that sounds, it's actually a really awesome metaphor. You guys know I'm, you know, infamous for my metaphors. It's all about thinking and feeling, how does this vibe with me? Does this make me comfortable? Is this what I'm seeing and feeling for myself? Or do I need to take this off and invest in something else, dress in something else, connect with something else? And the, the time of the Libra full moon is a really powerful time for you to start to set those intentions. Now the cards that are jumping out for you are so awesome, you guys, look. First one that was jumping out was the Four of Swords. I'm sorry, Four of Wands. And again, this is the either it's the Cleopatra Tarot or the Nefertiti Tarot, but either way, I'll link it down below, believe me. But again, this is what really is being called into question right now, um, and definitely with the Queen of Swords here, it's an assessment. It's a logical, like, um, mental assessment where you kind of take inventory of it all. How does it make me feel? Why? Because you are now creating the roots, the foundation of this next lifestyle, this actual cycle that is that we are all entering in at this time in our lives. Mars is currently sitting in the sign of Gemini, which is all about exploring your options and asking questions. And it's very faded, it's very karmic. So you wanna like keep your mind and your thoughts open with this. Um, Saturn here, this is bringing me to the Four of Wands, wants to create this really strong, firm foundation for you, even in the sign of Aquarius. So this means that you are inviting in totally different type of energy, totally different vibes. Not only are you thinking about in the present moment, but you're thinking about the in the future. Where it is that you are going, where it is that you're headed. Definitely with the Strength card and the Chariot card here, because this is about taking all of the, the good and the bad, taking the dark with the light, taking the positive with the negative, all of it has helped to shape you all of it has an, is an experience all of it is a lesson taking all of those things with you and carrying them forward as your tools for your growth for your prosperity last thing that is that I want to say to you guys is of course with Libra energy this highlights relationships this is not just intimate romantic relationships eight of wands someone's about to meet their soulmate <laughs> or relationships are going to be moving into the next stage the next cycle but this is not about um, just those intimate romantic relationships, although feel free totally, especially with the chariot card here, um, to set intentions around love and romance and you know true love and those types of things, your long-term partners. Um, but relationships with all things. What's your relationship like with food? What's your relationship like with the things that you're wearing and that you're dressing? If it makes you feel sluggish, how you dress and how you are approaching, you know, the world and yourself, then this is again that honest assessment that says, okay, I am confident, I am brave, I am bold, I am a higher vibrational being. So what are those things and what are those changes? What are those shifts? What are those habits of this person? I am how you are now going to be defining yourself. Let me know down in the comments, you guys. I'm sending you guys all of my blessings. I'm sending you guys all the love and light in the universe <laughs> that is there for all of us to share. We, As you guys know, we live in such a abundant, lush environment. You know what I mean? Like such a lush, um, you know, universe. And I just think that's so amazing. Uh, 111 is on the clock right now. As I'm looking at that, my mom just texted to remind me 111, Jess. So again, this is about manifest, manifesting. It's about setting intention. It's about higher vibration. It's not about looking at your current circumstances with judgment or harshness or abandonment or lack. It's about tapping into the potential of what it can be. And if it can be it, then it will be it. So it is it. If you just call it into call it into existence now and be about it, okay? So make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.